Hi, this is Karen, bringing a video in this beautiful field of flowers today in nature where I love to be and I want you to join me. I want to talk a little bit about why you might not want to shower. Probably sounds kind of gross to a few people. What do you mean not shower? I don't want to be dirty. But if you live in the city, you might not want to shower. If you live in the city and you don't have a good water filter on your shower, you might not want to shower. If you live out in the country and you have a well and you haven't checked the quality of your well water in the last three to five years, you might not want to take a shower. So why wouldn't you want to take a shower? Because it feels so good to freshen up under the water. It feels so good to kind of clean a few of the areas of our body that we want to clean with soap. It definitely enlivens us and wakes us up, relaxes our muscles with the warm or the super warm water. Some people like a cold shower, not me, but some people do. We have different choices. But I have not taken a shower since June the 14th. Today's July the 19th, so that's a little over a month. But am I dirty? No. In fact, what I'm doing is I'm regenerating the integrity of my skin's mantle. The very top layer of your skin is a mantle. It's protective so that you can zoom in on absorbing sunlight when you eat a non-congesting diet, meaning you're not eating wheat every day, you're not eating dairy, you're not eating factory farmed animals, you're not eating pasta, which is paste, which is gonna give you congestive headaches, make cysts in your body. It's gonna obstruct you from getting the sunlight in. This is an integumentary system, your skin, and it has to be able to take nutrients in like sunlight, which is food, and it also has to be able to allow the release of toxins that leave the body, including toxic emotions, because they're what? They're neurochemicals or neurotransmitters, which means they need water to flow through the body. They're chemical messengers. So if I take a shower because I'm interested in building a world family, I want my world family to be as strong as possible, to have integrity. Come on, Pablo. I want them to have high intelligence and I want them to have soaring exponential intuition. Pablo just joined us here. <laughs> so if I'm going to shower in a city water that contains fluoride and chlorine like my city water does, and you'll have to check your city, most of them have the chlorine for sure, chlorine and fluoride are what's known as halogens. They're chemicals that damage all of your glands and especially your thyroid gland. If I want to heal my thyroid gland, I want to decalcify my pineal gland, I have to remove myself from the daily ingestion of chlorine and fluoride, what, two, three, five, ten, twenty minutes, depending on how long you shower, because it's going in every single pore into my bloodstream. It's going in through my scalp and into my my bloodstream in the head. It's going in through my ears, my nose, my eyes, and then maybe using toxic shampoos full of fragrances. You might not want to shower, so what do you do? You don't want to be stinky. You don't want to feel really grungy and yucky and have people at your job or your school or your family say, what the heck is going on? I mean, you're getting a little too hippie for me because people like to put each other in boxes. Well, is she a hippie? Is she a Rasta? Is she this? Is she that? Or is he this? Or is he that? So if you tell them that you're not showering, they can draw a lot of glittering conclusions. They can make a lot of common assumptions. She must stink. She's kind of dirty, you know? That's kind of gross. I mean, I can't believe that. As it is, she doesn't paint her fingernails. She got rid of her TV in 1985, and now she doesn't shower either. That's really kind of weird. So I would advise you to do the same thing I do. Keep it on the down low. Keep it to yourself, okay? I'm 56. I feel better not taking a shower the majority of the time. I can go months and months on end, and I've done this off and on for years, but it's better to give the skin a breather and to let the mantle regenerate itself. Use your shea butter. Get yourself a pack of washcloths at 
one of the stores that you have locally to you. In our small city, we just have a box store like Walmart or Walgreens. A bundle of these thin cotton washcloths are like $4. You can find them on sale for $1.99 or $2 for a whole folded stack. Wash them up really good so you get all the coloring and the chemicals off of them. And then use them first to do your face. So you might want to use something like I do right now. I use the Hawaiian brand in the orange container that's an enzyme facial cleaner. It's just natural from papaya and mangoes because they contain enzymes, fruit enzymes. And I do a little bit of this gently on my face, wipe it off with a warm washcloth. I do underneath my arms with a, a handmade salt scrub that I have sitting on my counter made of dried flowers, infused oil, a solar infused oil from lavender and calendula and some really good premium salt put it in my food processor and now I use it under my underarms. Now last I take my washcloth and I wipe from front to back like you're supposed to do the yoni and do the backside however you want. If you're still eating a sticky icky stinky diet with you know dead animals and dairy and flesh it's going to smell more. Your underarms are going to smell especially if you're a coffee drinker and a weed eater on top of it and a high sugar eater you're going to say, no way would that ever work for me. People stink, but people actually don't stink as much when they remove 90% of that out of their diet. Then if you still want to have it 10% of the time, have it on a rare occasion. But your underarms are not going to stink. Your yoni's not going to stink. You know, no one's going to accuse you of smelling like tuna or like fish because you're going to start to smell like sweet flowers because every day you're going to start your day with juice, fruits, smoothies, fresh salads, fresh greens. I had fresh baby cucumbers today and I dipped it in a little bit of uh, spinach and artichoke hummus. After I had my yerba mate, you know, and after I had my fresh apple um, late this morning, it was rising. So you might not want to shower. You might not want to shower if you live out in the country and you have a well, if you haven't had the water tested. Let me give you an example of another client. She's passed away now. Her name was Priscilla Harvilla. And she used to come in and at one point she had something I'd never seen before because it's like Harry Potter all over again. We've got a new diagnosis being invented every day under the format of an ICD code, meaning an international code of disease. So now what? You have a specified treatment for this code and you have what? An ability to bill for this code through insurance. I did insurance defense law for a firm called Robinson & Wood in San Jose, California as my uh, beginning stages of working through college. And so that was before I became a paralegal and I learned a good deal about insurance law. So everything needs to be under a code and it needs to be uniformly handled. That's why we even have the uniform commercial code. So now if someone has trigger thumb, it means that when she was on the massage table getting healing, her, her thumb would literally just shake uncontrollably. And at one point I heard, because of the higher level of intuition, I heard she's being exposed to arsenic. I said, Priscilla, she lived out in Esco on Smith Road. Priscilla, could you please have your well tested? I keep hearing that there, you're being exposed to arsenic. Well, Priscilla went, time went by, and this isn't exactly accepted in the world, so I faced a lot of criticism, a lot of put-downs, and an awful lot of eye-rolling over the many years that I've been on this journey. It's kind of like the men who pointed out that dogs could sniff out spores that become cancer, way before pathologists could detect it on a slide or a blood test. So Priscilla went ahead and did the, the stereotypical thing, she had the tendon released, just like they do with carpal tunnel, and I've healed thousands of people, thousands of situations where people have had carpal tunnel symptoms by a few exercises and releasing the mind-body because it is a tensomyositis syndrome. So thumb was the same thing. So Priscilla had issues of being under someone's thumb, and on the, that was the mind-body level. She also had issues of arsenic in her water. So if you have a well and you're feeling really secure because you're not on city water and you're still showering every day, maybe two, three times a day in this warm weather we're having, maybe you don't even know that you're being exposed to excessive manganese, arsenic, cadmium, 
sometimes even MEK, methyl ethyl ketone, which is a solvent that's used in a lot of industrial warehouse buildings where they're cleaning mechanical and electrical parts. It's very similar to the nail polish remover that women are putting on their nail beds constantly and degrading their bodies, denaturing their bodies. So Priscilla came back a couple of years later as I had seen her regularly and now the right side was also having an involuntary tremor. She again was diagnosed with trigger thumb. And this is what I mean about not just burying the symptoms with a placebo surgery to get rid of what's bothering you, to cut the tendon in the shoulder, to cut the back and release something there when obviously your frame was too heavy. When maybe obviously or not so obviously you were taking a shower in harmful chemicals every day. Okay? So come to find out she finally agreed and had her well tested because her husband wasn't going to pay to have the well tested. It was expensive. And turns out that she actually had a high amount of arsenic in her well water. So the whole time this really was, in my opinion, what I had heard, the root cause behind Priscilla's dual cases of trigger thumb. So showering in chlorine and fluoride is what I call Hitler's shower. It destroys the mantle, it hardens the arteries, it dims your eyesight, it causes a lot of problems including if you're already full of cysts, which most people that I see are. It's going to also be a causative factor in causing those cysts to harden because what does chlorine do? It dries things out to the bone. What does fluoride do? It's a neurotoxin, it dims intelligence, okay? And why we put it on children's teeth is beyond me. It also calcifies the pineal gland. So I work with clients and I show them how to use uh, special things like cilantro is one, chlorella is another, and I help people put it into their diet on a regular basis like I did. So I just wanted to say maybe you might want to consider, it might be the best thing for you, that you do the sponge bathing and you get yourself a pack or two of two to five dollar pack of the thin washcloths, wash them up, fold them and put them in your bathroom or in your bedroom so they're your supply. You rewash them and reuse them <clears throat> so it's very hospitable to being very environmentally friendly. And you can tap into some of my other videos where, you know, and my course on becoming a natural goddess where I talk about how to make your own absolutely pure soap and take care of yourself as a natural woman. Becoming a modern day natural goddess is an eight part course that talks about this. So consider whether or not you should be taking a shower or you might want to start sponge bathing. Remember that just like if you're doing a fast, the first two to three days feel kind of weird because you're used to waking yourself up in the shower. You're used to relaxing in the shower. It's kind of a place people turn to to de-stress. Maybe it's not the best thing for you. And what I want is to strengthen the world family one person at a time together. So long for now.